Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Coach Matt, EliteThrowsCoaching.com, doing another video analysis. Now this is a free video analysis. This is Raymond, and he sent this uh, video in, I believe, this past weekend. So I'm about a week behind on getting to these because of the paid video analysis sessions that I do. If you're looking to get one within about 24 hours, uh, full video analysis, they're a lot longer than the free ones that you see here. They come with a full detailed explanation uh, over uh, email, and also you get um, other links to other videos to help explain everything out. They take a lot longer. They're a lot more in-depth, a lot more detail. You guys can click the link below to go to the website to actually do a paid video analysis. But for something like this, a free one, I'm going to give a couple of little tips, a couple things for Raymond to work on um, to hopefully get him throwing a lot farther. So he sent in a video analysis to me about two years ago. This guy is a sophomore in high school, so he was in eighth grade the last time that he sent this in. It was May of 2017. Um, and with Raymond, the thing that he always mentions is that he's self-taught, don't have a throwing coach, and he's five foot seven. And it's like, dude, you can't control those things, okay? You can't control the fact that you don't have a throwing coach, and you can't control the fact that you're five foot seven. What you can control is that you're going to throw as hard as you possibly can. If it's fun, you're going to keep doing it. And believe it or not, you are going to beat a heck of a lot of people who are six feet and above. I remember the first time uh, watching Andy Bloom, who was a thrower from back in the kind of late 90s, early 2000s, and everyone said Andy Bloom was short. Well, the dude's making Olympic trials and making Olympic teams. It's like relax. Uh, you know, if he's five foot ten or five foot eleven or whatever he was. And then a couple of years later, Reese Hoffa comes along, who's about five eleven, six feet tall. Everyone talking about him being a short thrower. And look what he did. So you guys have to get this idea of being short out of your head. Yes, you are not as tall as somebody who is six foot five, but you know how rare it is to be that tall? I mean, you're you're going to be going up against other throwers who are probably on average 5'10", 5'11", maybe 6 feet. If you're 5'7", and you can use all of that 5'7", every inch of that 5'7", and you got a guy who's 6' tall who's all hunched over and his arms are bent and he's not using the entire circle um, you know, he's all uh, falling out the front and his head's down and his chest is down when he's trying to throw the discus. Well, that six foot tall kid's throwing like he's about five foot five. So you can beat that kid, but you've got to use every inch of that five foot seven. And that leads us to this video because in this video, we'll watch it pretty quick here. You can see a couple things are going on. Now, the first thing you can really notice is that He's not let, keeping the discus back behind him. That discus is sneaking up in front of him at the front of the circle. Uh, or as he drives through the middle of that circle to the front. The discus is actually getting ahead of the hip. So if you were 6'5 doing this, guess what? It's not going to go as far. If you're 5'7 doing this, it's not going to go as far. So let's use all of that 5'7. You do a great job getting separation in the back, pulling that discus back behind your right hip. Keep it there. As you go to drive down that circle, see right here, you're letting your upper body unwind. You're losing that separation. And then as you go to drive down the middle right here, the discus is no longer behind that right hip. The discus is sneaking ahead. And now you're carrying that discus in front of you. So again, you're five foot seven, who cares? But at this point right here, you might as well be four foot seven, because you're losing all separation. You're losing everything that you've got, all that torque, all that built up, wound up, bound up energy. Okay, you're losing it. You get to the front of the circle. You're wide open. You're starting to look with your head. You're starting to pull that left arm around too early. Your left foot just landed, haven't even grounded yet. Now it's grounded. The left foot just lands and you're already starting to peak. You're already starting to open up. Keep that head back. Keep that left arm back. Because again, you want to use every single inch of that five foot seven. You don't want to, you know, be four feet tall. Okay. And when you start to shorten your levers and when you start to lose separation and when you start to open up too early, you're shortening yourself. Okay. You want to be long. You want to be tall. You want to be back and stretched out. 
you want to use every single inch of leverage that you have. Okay, so the first place where you use that leverage is number one, keeping the discus a little bit higher up in the air. You know, if the lower you get, the closer it gets to your body, the shorter the lever. Keep the arm up and keep it back behind you. If you can keep it up and behind you, you're going to have a longer lever. See here how it's dropping down by your butt? It's dropping down by your butt because you are losing centrifugal force. And that discus is going to drop down to the earth. So in order for you to keep that discus from falling out of your hand, you have to drop the arm. Keep the arm up and keep the discus behind you the entire time. And this is not going to happen. It's going to keep the levers long. Okay, keep the discus behind you. You're going to keep separation in the middle. Okay, keep that left arm back. Keep it back. Keep the head back. Keep the left, the left arm back and keep it long so you can use it at the end. Don't have that bend in the elbow and don't have the arm all the way open. Long left arm. Keep that elbow locked out. Reach for the back of the circle. Look out the back of the circle. There's got to be something back there for you to look at and something back there for you to point at, some type of visual. So take a, a bag, take a discus bag, take a garbage can, an orange cone, anything that you have, and put it back behind the circle. It looks like there's a fence or a hill back here. Put it on top of a fence post, put it up against that fence, maybe put it all the way up on the top of the hill, farther away, so or further away, so that you can keep looking at it, you can keep your eyes on it. Okay. The last thing we want to talk about is delivering power. When you lose contact with the ground, you can no longer deliver power. It's it's physics. Um, it's why I get so fed up with the whole uh, like hockey. You're not allowed to leave the ice when you when you check somebody. But when you leave the ice and you check somebody, you're actually slowing down because you're no longer in contact with the ground. It's actually less hard of a hit, less hard of an impact when you leave your feet. If you keep your feet on the ground and push or feet on the ice, skates on the ice and push through the ice, you're going to hit that person even harder. Okay. Uh, NFL is the same thing. You're not allowed to launch off the ground to let your feet leave the ground to hit somebody. But when you leave the ground, you actually slow down. So it's an easier hit when you leave the ground. If you keep your feet on the ground, you can deliver more power. But as soon as that left heel grounds, what do you start to do? The knees are bent. You're making yourself short. We want to get long. So extend those legs. But you leave the ground. See how you leave the ground. You can no longer deliver power. The discus is still in your hand. You're jumping and throwing with bent legs. Give me some extension. Keep those feet on the ground and get tall. Explode and get powerful. Get long. Get really, really tall at the end. Okay, because here you're releasing the discus. Look at that left foot come around. Dude, you are jumping in the air and throwing. Keep those feet on the ground. Turn the hips into the throw. Get the hips ahead. Get that head up. Get that chest up. Don't let yourself shrink. Don't let yourself hunch over. Don't jump off the ground with your legs bent. Get extension. Get really, really long really, really tall, keep those feet on the ground and explode. Because it's one thing if you're five foot seven and using every inch of that five foot seven and you're getting beat by a kid who's six feet tall and using every inch of his six feet. But if you're five foot seven, you've got to use every inch of that five foot seven. Because if you're five foot seven and you're keeping your knees bent, if we measured somehow from the toe of your left foot to your head, you're probably only about five foot two right here. Okay? If we measure from right here, the discus to your butt is probably only about a foot and a half long. That means at this point, you've got the arm length of someone who's only about three feet tall. So use your levers. Get super, super long for me, okay? Now there's other stuff going on in this that we don't have time to cover. But those are the big things. Don't lose separation. Keep the discus tall and away from your body. That's going to increase the length of that lever. 
Keep the discus behind you the entire time. Don't let it sneak up in front. That's going to increase separation. It's going to increase torque. And then keep the feet on the ground and give me full extension with your lower body. Full extension with the hips. Get the chest up. Get the head up. But keep your feet on the ground. Okay? Deliver as much power as possible into that throw. Don't just jump and throw. All right? So those are the three big things. You need to throw with all, every single inch, every single millimeter of that five foot seven. You need to use all of that to your advantage. Okay? So you've got to stay long. You've got to keep that discus up. You've got to keep separation. And you've got to keep your feet on the ground to deliver maximum power. Okay? I don't like when people say, and I think you even said it in your email, you say that you feel like your height is almost a hindrance. You feel like your height um, is holding you back. Dude, you can't do anything about that. Okay, If you're 5'7", be 5'7", be proud of it, embrace it, but use every single inch of that 5'7 to throw as far as possible. Work on cleaning up the form, work on keeping the discus back, work on keeping your feet on the ground when you throw and get full extension and use every single ounce of energy and every single inch of leverage that you have in your body and you are going to see big time increases in your throws all right that's what i got for you today raymond thank you so much for sending in this video if you have any questions just leave a comment down below anybody else if you've got any questions let me know and i'll talk to you guys real soon